Welcome back to Planet Coaster. I'm your host, Brofgar, and today I've got another experiment for you. Now, in several of my episodes beforehand, I have mentioned this idea that where I think there's going to be an optimal setup for your entrance and exit locations for the roller coaster station, especially with some of these smaller ro roller coasters. But today, hopefully the synthetic test here will answer that for us, or at least to give us the working pieces to then go and experiment a little bit more. So this test is hopefully going to answer that for us. As you can see here, I have four identical roller coasters set up, but the entrance and exit locations are different. Now, most of the roller coasters I've seen on the workshop and even the ones I've made all work off roller coaster stations that have an entrance and exit on the same side. That seems to work out as far as the building setup goes right there. So over here on the far left, I have the exit set up on the far left with the entrance on the far right. Moving here, we have the entrance on the left and then the entrance is near the head of the roller coaster so we can see that's a pretty typical setup i've used this one many many times so we'll see how that works in comparison to that over here we also have the entrance now set up in the center of the roller coaster so the distance to the back seat as compared to the distance to the front seat is pretty comparable right there that is a snap location not necessarily right on the center which would be right here or maybe a little bit more right there. We get the idea. It snaps to this location and it lines up well with all the columns and everything, the building that you set up right there. This is potential, potentially the most optimized setup for this arrangement right here, but I think this might be the best one overall. We have the entrance on this side and the exit on that side. With the shortest distance overall, to, the, to this point right here, so the amount of time it takes the person to go from here to there should be the absolute minimum time. But maybe as we look at this and watch the flow of traffic, that may not be a, a factor at all. And the amount of time it takes to get off the roller coaster, I think this is going to be really important, is that the exit is going to be at the center of the roller coaster. Now, I think this is probably going to be the best right here, but we're going to find out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up all of these roller coasters at the exact same time, and I'm going to count how many people it takes, you know, how many people can go through this ride over a given amount of time. And not only that, we'll also study the traffic pattern. So ready or not, here we go. And just so you know, because I, I know somebody's going to ask this, all of these roller coasters have the exact same prestige level. They also have the all same operations. So they should all have to wait to be fully loaded. I think that's an important bit. I don't want anybody skipping. So this has to be a full train every single time. I'm going to open this up and people are just going to flood on. <laughs> All right, here we go. Unleash the crowds. And yes, I have nearly 12,000. Well, we should have 12,000 guests in this park in a short amount of time. Even the queue lines are the same length. I know. I'm being exact. My frame rate, though, is suffering. Sorry about that. Overall, if we take a look at the first coasters setting off, they are all setting off relatively the same, but I think this one's a little bit quicker than the rest. With the one on the far left being definitely the slowest. All right, so this is going to be the very first test. We're going to take a look at the flow path of this roller coaster that is on the far left here. So we have the entrance on the far right, the exit on the far left. As we can see, the people are going to get off, and we have to wait for them to get out, and all of them have to exit the station here before the people can get on. So here they go, they're getting off, they're getting off, they're still getting off. This is taking forever. Come on, hurry up. That person has to walk all the way from here to there before the next group of people can get it on. And now they can get on, boom, everybody's in. Now this over here, you can see the amount of time it takes for these people to kind of move through and fill up the queue here. It is a little less optimized. If there was another roller coaster that would come in right now, we might be able to see a big difference in the amount of people. Now, this is strange. Nobody's filling up these last parts right there. There's two seats completely open. Hmm. All right, so I'm running this test right now, and I've got it sped up so we can see everything that's happening right here. And I'm seeing the results that I wanted to see. Watch this roller coaster over here as people exit. Boom, gone. Now, over here, they are still trailing out over here as well. They're also trailing out as well. This one's already off, this one's now filled back up, and as people are queuing back up, you can see this one fills up a little bit faster than this one, where they have to walk a little bit further. So you can see there how optimal this entire experience is when they when you place that exit so they can get off really fast. Look at this, it's already off. And now look at these two. Now this one, there we go. That one's gonna go, that one's gonna go. This one's already back, it's ready to go again. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Placing that exit, right there in the middle of the roller coaster on the far side, 
just gets people off the roller coaster so quick. I mean, that's why they do it in real life like that. I can't tell you the amount of roller coasters I've been on that work exactly like that. So there we go, some visual indication of what's going on here, but let's go ahead and put some timers on this stuff to see just what the differences are. All right, so here we go. I've lined this up in my editing software. And one of the interesting things that I'm seeing right here is that these roller coasters don't necessarily come in at the exact same time. However, I lined them up so that they unload at the exact same time. I lined it up when I saw the first person get off the roller coaster. So here they go. They're all getting off the roller coaster. And as you can see, those three roller coasters, respectively, one on the top left, two in the top right, three on the bottom left, and then four on the bottom right, which is the most optimal. We can see just how much faster the fourth one is on the bottom right, and it unloads and then reloads the roller coaster and starts moving again within 20 seconds right there. The others are on the top here are gonna take another 10 seconds beyond that. So you can see that there's a big time saving in just lining up the roller coaster that way. Now the roller coaster on the bottom left for some odd reason has a strange anomaly and just won't leave the station while I was recording it. However, all these roller coasters weren't recorded at the exact same time, but since they're in the same game running at the same time, they are in sync. Does that make sense? Let's go to a more practical example. All right, so here we are back in the park. And if you remember at the very beginning of the video, I started all of these roller coasters at the exact same time. And I paused the game and closed them all at the exact same time as well. So both of these roller coasters, or so we say all of these roller coasters have been open for the exact same amount of time. I stopped it when this roller coaster over here hit 1000 lifetime guests. So it's very easy to do the math here. So we can see 997 lifetime guests went through my most optimized setup right there. So that was with the entrance at this middle, which I don't think makes a big difference depending on where you put this, as long as they don't have to run a mile to get back to the roller coaster. But the big thing is putting the exit on the far side so that that distance that they have to cover to get out of the roller coaster and clear the way for the next guests, that is the best setup. That was 1,000 lifetime guests. And in that same amount of time, these other stations were only able to hit 843, 849, and 841. I believe a few family groups got cut in half and therefore left a few seats open and that's how that happened, that they got different numbers. But you can see it's basically 850 for placing all of these stuff on one side as compared to placing the exit on the far side and the entrance on the near side or vice versa, whatever way you want to set it up. This is 15% more effective. So if we look at this in money terms, look at this roller coaster. We have 2,600 potential profit for the monthly income right there with a real last month monthly income of $1,600 as compared to this other roller coaster, which is less optimized, only having a potential monthly income of $2,130. That's 500 bucks in the bank, more or less. I mean, look at that. That's, that's, that's obvious. Like by just placing the exit on the far side and using the near side for the entrance, you've optimized this by so much and place it right in the center of the roller coaster, boom. I mean, that's money in the bank, money in the bank all the way down. Absolutely awesome. We can obviously take this tutorial here to the next level with multiple roller coasters and investigate some of those dynamics. I think that'll get a little bit more into the entrance right there, but I think this is enough for one video. So hopefully you guys have found this somewhat informative or helpful. If you did, maybe leave a like button on the way out and let me know. If you got something you want me to try, leave it down there in the comment section below. I'm always reading those, just trying to figure out what the next tutorial is gonna be. Thank you guys for all of your support lately. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Continue to stay awesome, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Brothgar.